Hi there friends, hi there newcomers, and welcome to what is an entirely new series on this channel. For those that know me know that I enjoy making lore videos for The Elder Scrolls, but my enjoyment of the game extends far beyond that as well. The Super Nintendo is the first console we had in our home when I was a kid, and I played the thing religiously right up until we got PlayStation 1 in the early 2000s. With most of my gaming now taking place on the PC, the Nintendo Switch is the only modern console I now play, and being that it now has an SNES app on it, now that's just perfect. The purpose of this series is just to highlight, elaborate and even review all of the games in the growing catalogue on the SNES app on the Nintendo Switch. To make these videos, I've made a point of completing or recompleting all of the games I'm going to review. Some of these games are historic masterpieces, others are hidden gems and some are just plain terrible. So I will try my best not to let any form of nostalgia impact my decision making. With this nice catalogue of games at your disposal ready to play at home on the big screen, or on the go. I am hoping this series will help anyone in any way with what this wonderful console had to offer us all back in the day. Before we get started though, if you are new to the channel please feel free to subscribe, I would appreciate it. And I am also on Twitter and Instagram, the former doesn't really get much attention so if you are on them platforms please feel free to give me a follow. But with that all out of the way, let's get started. Phallus 4 is a platform game developed and published by Telenet Japan for PC Engine, Super CD-ROM in 1991 exclusively in Japan. But in 1992, a vastly different version entitled Super Phallus 4 was released by Atlas Software outside Japan on the Super Nintendo. Before the Super Nintendo port, there were extensive changes made. From three original characters in the original version, on the Super Nintendo version you only get to play as one. The magic system was replaced by a special weapon system and the animated sequences from the original version were also removed. And although several levels were removed, a new level, Castle Vanity, was actually designed and added specifically for this SNES version. The plot follows the event of Alice 3, in which Yuko had become the goddess of the world, Vacante, and had watched over the world in peace since the defeat of Glames. Trouble brews when the Dark Prince Galgia, or Galgor as he's named unfortunately in this version, manages to break out of prison and kidnaps the former heroine Valna. The playable character, Lena, requests permission to infiltrate Galgir's stronghold and free Valna. So in terms of storyline, it's all pretty generic and it's been done many times before and after this game. The original release of Valus 4 received highly positive reviews, but Super Valus 4 received slightly worse reviews. It seemed that there were a lot of sacrifices that had to be made, and some reviewers even called it a bit dull looking and boring. But that was over 25 years ago now, and being that I'd never actually played this game before, how did I find it? Ok, so the first thing I'm not too keen on about this game is that a lot of the levels can look dull and repetitive. It's an early 90s Super Nintendo game, and it really shows. I often find it quite barren and empty quite a lot of the time. You'll be wandering along and it'll be quite a while before you'll see any kind of change or enemies approach. Another thing I'm not too keen on is that I find the controls can be quite stiff. Jumping around and manoeuvring is nowhere near as flexible as a better platformer, like Super Metroid. The control layout can also be a bit strange. You find weapon enhancements and power-ups throughout the levels, and you have to press the attack button and up at the same time. When you're surrounded by enemies it can be really difficult to pull off and it doesn't make much sense as to why they didn't just assign it to an unused button on your controller. I'd say the enemy variety is okay, but really not great, and the way they move around the level does feel really scripted. And the soundtrack, which is of huge importance in these old games, I'd say is fine, but just not that memorable. And some levels I really enjoy it, but others I just find it a bit tedious. So despite this game having its faults, there's a lot to enjoy as well. First of all, I really like the character models as well as the storyboard artwork. It's got almost a Sailor Moon-esque style to it, as you would expect with 90s anime. And I would say that translates well into the bosses of the game. 
Especially this guy who rides about in a tiger like a badass wearing what looks like some kind of Power Ranger armour. Over the top, ridiculous, I like it. I think the difficulty of the game is quite fair as well. It's not too easy and not too difficult either. In many platformers I used to play during this time, you could hide in the corner and just spam attacks towards the boss. But I found here in Valus 4 that when you would hide in a corner, the boss would register it, so you were always at risk wherever you were. And when I said that some of the levels were quite barren and minimal, that's not always a bad thing. I'm trying not to show too much on screen because I know that some of you might end up playing this for the first time soon. But as I said, some of the levels are really nice, and the fact that there's not too many enemies isn't always a bad thing. And finally, the last thing I really like about this game is the power-ups. Although I said that they could have been assigned to a better button on the controller, I feel like they still work really well in most cases. Some power-ups work well against certain enemies and others just give you armour buffs. But altogether, a nice addition. So overall, I'd say Super Valus 4 is a fine game. It's not particularly fantastic or memorable, but it's not terrible at the same time. At times the levels can be dull, repetitive and a little bit barren. The controls can be a bit stiff and the button layout is just a bit strange in my opinion. The soundtrack, although not bad, is fine. It's just not that memorable. However, I like the character models and the artwork storyboards. I find the difficulty very fair. There are some nice levels, and I like the addition of the power-ups. Not to mention, I find the majority of the bosses are really cool and provide a really good challenge. With all that taken into account, in my opinion, which is just my opinion, I'd give Super Valus 4 3 stars out of 5. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you have any feedback, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If you have any memories of the Valus series or any Super Nintendo game at all, then please share them with me. I think I'll pick someone random in the comment section and I'll give you a shout out in the next video. But until next time, see you later.